All right. Uh, I'm calling this meeting to order. Uh, can you perform the uh, roll call? Um, committee member Spurzum? Here. Committee member Greenbaum is absent. And Chair Gerbosi? Here. All right, we will have the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. We will now have open time for public regarding non-agenda items. Is Patty out there? Uh, we don't have any members of the public um, at this time, and we don't have any email. Okay, thank Actually, you. Actually, Patty just joined us. If you'd like to announce Patty. Um, open time. Okay, so then the next item on our agenda is general business. The first item under general business is the summary of fiscal year 2020 to 2021 sales tax override fund and preparation of annual report. Okay, thank you. Um, the, the item in your packet, item number three, uh, contains a summary of um, the 2020-21 fiscal year. Um, these are the audited numbers. Um, the auditor has um, audited them and issued the financial statements and there were not any changes. Um, on page four of your packet, um, I have the summary for last year. Uh, it, the beginning balance is as July 1st, 2020, not July 20. It's um, July 1st, 2020 was $9.2 million. Um, the measure F sales tax received from the Corte Madera local sales tax measure was about $3.4 million. And then there was a reimbursement from the Transportation Authority of Marin for some, um, <clears throat> some expenditures which had were ultimately paid by, um, by TAM. So then you can see down below there, are all of the expenditures are listed in the various categories, um, disaster preparedness, flood control, senior or youth programs. In this case, it was just salaries for senior programs um, and then various um, multimodal transportation and streets projects and then community grants and gift cards. Um, and then down below, you'll see um, transfers to other funds. And that is um, about $155,000 to reimburse the town or the town's general fund for um, the project manager and some code enforcement officer positions. Um, and then $58,000 was transferred to the housing assistance fund, um, which provided residents with, um, with assistance for rental and mortgage payments during the pandemic. Um, so at the end of the year, June 30th, 2021, um, the, the total ending balance was just over $8.6 million. <clears throat> the emergency reserve, um, which was approved by the council, is $2.5 million, and leaving available at the end of that fiscal year about $6.1 million. And then the reports that follow um, in your packet, one that I've um, included for the first one, I've included for. Um, by, by the same uh, categories that were just listed that we just went over. Um, and they're in detail and in summary format. And then the following attachment is by project number. So you can see the various projects and there's also, you know, that also is in, in a more detailed and a summary format. So um, I'd be happy to answer any questions about these reports that you may have. Carl, do you have any questions, comments, whatabouts? Um, no, I have some questions as we get further into the detail, but we can keep going. Actually, I have a question. With regard to the community grant slash gift cards, does that, I'm not arguing with the 
spending of those funds with regard to the town as a whole. I'm just have a question as to whether that falls within the um, categories that are stated in the memo and we've stated all along as to what is the purview of the, how the resources from the sales tax fund is spent. Um, I don't know that they fall into one of those specific categories that, which is why I listed it separately, but um, that was approved by the town council. It was in order to support, support local businesses. Well, I knew it was approved. I just had this question as to, I don't want to have mission creep of stuff just going, oh, let's have sales tax cover that. Yeah, Kent, that's a good question. Sorry, so just let's talk this out. We have Fred on here too. You know, we received the A, well, we, we received the money from last fiscal year and it's already been, the money's been spent or moved from the state, right? The hundred and well, how much money? How much it was money? about, it was approximately $124,000. And where did that go, ultimately? Um, that went mainly to things um, that that we at the time didn't think were going to be covered by FEMA, which are not. They were things like safety uh, supplies for staff, um, staff who had to miss time due to you know either having um, COVID or being. Um, forced to quarantine because a family member did for um I think the cleaning of you know the build you know those sort of things things and was it a was it a dollar for dollar match that for our reimbursements was there anything well the re well the amount we actually submitted to the state was More. it was like two million dollars three million dollars and we got 124 000. I mean that was just the amount that agencies our size got so we could you know I could, I could transfer that I think it's already been audited, right? So we're in the rears. I'm wondering, you know, we have the, the second installment of the ARP monies, and I know that we took that to the council as well in the finance subcommittee. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm wondering if we recommend, um, and we put a notation, but this coming fiscal year, when we receive that money, we do a credit back to the sales tax fund in, in the okay. same amount, for the, because it is appropriate um, to use, I think we, philosophically, we should use the state and fed monies first as Karen's okay. pointing out. That would be my recommendation. How much money is it? It's $32,500. Those are the gift cards that were purchased. Okay. So I it's think... not a large amount and it, it's not, I just, like I said, I don't wanna have mission creep on everything. I'm going, oh, let's just put that no, in. Okay. I, I think you're right Karen. And the reason why we did it earlier is because we didn't know at the time the ARP monies and, and what was exactly coming back. I think hindsight, had we known what we were going to receive, we would have earmarked it for that. So it is appropriate. So thank you for catching up. Okay. The other thing that I wanted to say, and this was something that was brought up, I saw it in the minutes from our last meeting, is that Patty had made a suggestion about having within senior and youth to see if there's some way, and I don't expect it necessarily to be delineated that way on our kind of summary report, but to have the distinction made of how much funds is spent for seniors and yes. how much is spent for youth. Yes, I did. I, don't know. Um, I did separate that for the, um, not for last year because it was too late. And I'll, <laughs> Okay. Um, All right. But as we go to the next report, you'll see for this this current year, you'll see that I, I did manage to um, separate them between um, youth and senior programs. Okay. All right. Uh, and I then... think, can I jump in real quick? Sure. Um, just on this page, and I'm sure there'll be some uh, you know changes when we look at you know year to date or through um, the, you know the the half year report what have you but um I, I guess my one observation is we have a lot of positive variances here a lot and um I, i'm it's just an observation on that front um uh, one i was thinking of, just quickly is are the code enforcement salaries does that include benefits or just is it raw salary um, last year, the, those positions were for two part-time, were for some part-time people who didn't have benefits other than like payroll tax that they're required to have. Um, so, but it was just their raw salaries as I require, as, as I require. Okay. 
Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we pull out. I, I, yeah, Dari, I think we, right, we pull out even for the project manager, right? That was the, the position too that we made mm -hmm. over these funds. I think we pay for, we pull out the benefits and retirement cost, um, and we pay that from the general fund. Right. And yeah. then the sales tax funds just pays the sale, just the just salaries only, because that was one of the promises yes. we made to the voters that we would not use this measure uh, for retirement and benefits. Got it. Right. Okay. I know that no retirement has been charged. And, and, and just to not speak, uh, CPA speak, <laughs> positive variance, what does that mean? Carl? Oh, just it's money left over that was budgeted to be spent. Okay. Right. And so, yes. And some of those, especially for, you know, the, the capital projects of public works projects, sometimes um, you, you'll see that some of that is um, carried over into the next year because it's, a, you know, time. It's budgeted. Right. right. And, and then yeah. again, kind of this, the same question that I had with regard to the, the 32,500 is, on the code enforcement, I saw somewhere that basically how we got to that that was appropriate to be expensed to the uh, sales tax funds is that a significant, perhaps majority of that was for um, matters with regard to um, vegetation and what have you and like that. Does, so does that still remain the case? Is the, the majority of code enforcement being, are those the majority of the tasks with code enforcement in that area? It's a good question. So yeah, uh, not as much as, as we when we originally started this, but there, it's still a big part of their position is to, to support the fire team on enforcement, on vegetation management. Um, also, what it's what it's really turning into is they're an offset to the public safety team on, on police as well. So they are enforcing <laughs> all public safety ordinances on the other side. So it's really turning into how we originally started this to help the fire side on vegetation management, enforcing those ordinances um, and really enforcing, you know, the public safety. They're offsetting and offsetting those services with both police and fire. And, they, and, and there's also a small percentage, Karen, of, of the quality of life issues as well, right? They're still doing some of the, the smaller things, dog up leash, you know, some of the noise ordinance stuff. So there is a percentage there. But okay. that, that, that program will not exist if this fund does not support it. Right? So going forward, it's suitable for that, for the code enforcement component to be charged to sales the sales tax. I believe it to be because it, it does meet the criteria and, and the, the pieces of quality of life issues um, that, you know, you maybe, you know, we didn't speak to quality of life issues originally in, in this measure. Um, that has been discussed multiple times in public forums. I can think of at least seven meetings now. So I feel like that, that public discussion has been made. Technically for this, this measure, as you know, it can be used for anything. And so anytime we go outside Mm -hmm. you know, maybe the scope or something we didn't think about, right? It's always it's always right. a starting point. Um, again, we we have been upfront, I believe, in our communications. And I don't want to parse the thing, but if they came to a point where it was like, say, let's just call it fifty percent one and fifty percent the other, but I just don't want to have sales tax covering people whining about barking freaking dogs. Yeah, the, the whole salary, has, I know for this current year, is not budgeted, not the entire code enforcement. I think it might be percent of the code enforcement um, manager, I believe is his title. And then um, I, I think maybe 75% of the, um, the code enforcement um, officer, I think is his. So it's not the entire amount that's being charged to sales tax. Okay. All righty. So it sounds like you do actually, Dari. It, it sounds like you do parse it out then. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Dari, this may just be another accounting question, but we have a lot of line items here that had some pretty big numbers that basically in the original total budget, they're there and then they're just zeroed out. I think, um, yeah. You know, EV stuff, roundabouts, ADA, LED signals, they all have pretty significant budgets and then they're just gone. I think those um, are generally that you know they that public works and rj can weigh in if if 
I need to be corrected, decide, oh, we're not going to be able to do it this year. It's going to be done the next year. So mm -hmm. of those are carried over. Okay. Next year. So we, when we do a mid-year budget revision, you know, I do consult with um, RJ, you know, to, before making these adjustments. So, so when those go away, they don't have, okay, they just go to zero. So there's no impact on variance either way. It just, it's gone. Yes, yes. We take okay. them out and then put them in the next year if, if okay. necessary. All right. Thank you. Okay. Set and conclude. I lost my agenda. So then, is there anything else that for us to address under agenda, agenda item 3A? Well, I guess we need to then look to uh, compile our report. That's correct. Hi, Jean. You're on mute. I apologize for uh, missing the meeting. <laughs> so, um, Chair. Gerbosi, I believe that at this point, if there aren't any, um, what we did last year was point out any clarifications that needed to be made um, and provide um, Daria with direction on what you'd like to have in the written draft report that would be presented to council. I don't think we have anything um, unless Carl, Carl or Jean, do you have anything that salient that you want to have added to our <clears throat> council report? Um, I, I'm good. Just thanks for the more detail, Daria. Very helpful. I wonder, should we should we add a team, just the conversation of, again, what we're going to do? It, it sounds like it'll be one of our normal reports, but also add the, the $32,000 change that we will um, credit the, the sales tax fund back when we receive the ARP money. When we receive the funds from the state. And yeah, and it might be, and that I think it's usually in July. It should be July, Karen. Um, and then on the other piece, I wonder if we just um, maybe an asterisk or, or add a couple sentences, just reminding everyone that we do parse out uh, benefits and retirement cost from those positions that the sales tax measure uh, fund supports. I think that would be a, a good reminder for everyone as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other thing also is if you include the, um, the summary where it has beginning balance, ending balance, I don't know if you just want to footnote the street safe routes to school where it's like 3 million one. I don't know if you would just want to add a footnote there just to some of the bigger ticket items. Because I mean, one of the questions is going to be since it's, and I know that people can dig through the detail, mm -hmm. but if it's oh, on yeah. the page. Okay. And I don't think you have to detail everything, maybe just some of the bigger ticket items so people okay. get an idea of where that money went to. Okay. Yeah, maybe they, do that. it supported, you know, 13 projects and then list the, the top three. Yeah. Whichever yeah. ones were the top three or whatever. Okay. Jean, did you have anything that you wanted to address with regard to uh, agenda item 3A? Um, no. Thank you. Okay, so do you have the guidance that you wish then on that? Yes, thank you. Okay. So then the next item, are we- um, Chair Gerbosi, I believe you have to um, ask for if there's any public comment on the item. Oh, public comment, thank you. Is there any public comment with regard to agenda item? 3A. We don't have any emailed public comment and our only guest does not have her hand raised at this time.
Okay, we can move on to the next Multi item. Task. Okay. So do you, you have what you need then? Yes, thank and, you, I do, for the report, yes. And we don't need a motion? No, we do not. not okay, great. Time. All right, then agenda item uh, 3B, summary of fiscal year 2021 to 2022 sales tax override fund. So this is the year that we are in the midst of. Yes, this um, report was as of February 24th. And I, I just checked it this morning. There really hasn't been any significant change to it. Um, so as you can see, the beginning balance was about $8.6 million. And then to date, we have received um, $2,000,000 $249,000 in sales tax money. That is um, the payment through December. There's a lag with the state. Um, and then you can see the various categories which I've listed out. Um, one being infrastructure for the, the town hall project, which um, is largely um, items relating to temporary offices, um, both for um, the engineering trailer and for the office that um, you know, a lot of the staff is in on Camel Vista Boulevard. Um, the, the debt service for the certificates of participation that were issued for the town hall project, we've had to make one payment um, and so that's in there. Um, then the, the same other categories, similar, not the same, but. Um, flood control, and then you can see senior and youth programs I've broken out. And in the detail, um, youth programs are referred to as enrichment, just because that's what had already been set up, but I've designated those for youth programs for this. Um, housing element, um, which was in the budget, um, uh, and then streets and parks and safe routes to school. Um, so to date, there's been $2.5 million of expenditures from this fund for the current fiscal year. Um, and there's about, eight, the total balance is about $8.3 million. And then when deducting out that emergency re, um, reserve, it's about $5.8 million. But this is just, as I said, a snapshot as of today or as of February 24th. Um, it does include the, um, the mid-year budget revision, which was approved by the town council in February. Um, and those are listed on page 16 of um, the, uh, the items in your packet. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and, and so $68,000 of that was, was just carried over, you know, unspent budget from the, the previous year. And then there were a few additions, um, the electric vehicle infrastructure and some traffic sig signal services and the Redwood Highway underground grounding project. And then there were a few, um, projects which I've listed, which were just basically moved around um, because the Transportation Authority of Marin will be paying um, for some, um, some projects which are different than what was in the original budget. So that moving around didn't really have any you know, effect on anything. It was just moving the projects around. But um, there was an increase in expenditures of $158,000 at the mid-year budget. Um, and again, the, the detail con um, contains both by type, you know, the various categories and by project number. Any um, questions on this? Quick question? Yes. Um, Maybe it, it's just mixing up different bullet points here, but uh, TAM in switching from paying for, uh, well, they're going to go for Granada Park instead of the westward to town limit project. Um, was that a choice by them or, or did they not be able to pay for one? Or, or I'm just curious why they're switching. Um, I'm not certain. I'm not certain RJ may have more information about that. Yeah, I, I think it was an internal decision where we had discretion to take the money now as part of a project that's getting built this summer or push it out a couple of years until the, the future project goes. Um, and we just decided to tap into the money sooner than later. Okay, so that was just money to us how we wanted to spend it. Yeah, it has to meet certain criteria, you know, spent on 
roads or certain infrastructure. Yeah. Okay. All right. That just needed clarification. And um, by, by the way, where are these EV stalls going to be put uh, in the in the retail areas or other places in town? I'm just curious. Um, so the two that are um, that are in the works, um, we're adding two additional ones here at the town hall um, parking lot. Um, and then we have some others that I guess are in conceptual phase, okay. but yeah. All right, just, just we're looking to try to add some over near the courtyard as well. So, and and these are people have to pay for charging, right? These are not free. Um, currently, they're they're public use, but they're not free. Ultimately, nothing's free. Well, you do have to pay for charging. Anywhere you go, I was just curious if these can. Yeah, be cur currently they're not. They are public. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh well, you're going to see a lot of Teslas parked there. Gift from the taxpayers. Uh, why? Why are we doing that? <laughs> because we're. Eco. Why are we doing it free? Um, you know, I don't know. There, that was, I think, the the early discussion several years ago, and and it's, I think, just kind of continued that way um we haven't installed the two additional heads so i think there's a you know potential for a discussion on that yeah i assume we'll probably move to it but as we roll some of our charging stations out the first you know six month period is, is normal it, it's a it's open to the public and it's free but at some point as we start to build our infrastructure pretty quickly um you know at our various um, parking lots we we would take something to council and we we would charge I mean, that will be our ultimate move. Yeah, yeah, I, I would expect so, because um, when I understand Tesla gives you, you know, some credit balance, but after you run through that, you pull out your credit card. And pretty much every station I've seen has a credit card slot. So I was just curious. I, I don't think we should be doing it for free because if people figure it out, you're going to find a lot of cars in those spots that are residential cars, not workers. Those and cars. where does the money come from that subsidizes it then? Power is coming from somewhere. Yeah, so right now, how we operate is- I don't want it to come from sales tax, that's for sure. It will come from our general fund, so it's coming from our pg and &E our account. It's right? gonna come out so, of your salary? It's coming <laughs> from the general fund, yeah. So, um, you know, right now we have one, we're gonna, we're gonna add a couple at the same site. And right now during business hours, because we have electric vehicles, our vehicles take priority. So town vehicles are on that charger, you know, Monday through Friday, but at night and on weekends, it is available to, you know, residents have used it. Um, and right now it's a, it's a local benefit, but at some point when we finalize that parking lot, our infrastructure there, we, uh, we will go to charge, you know, we will go to a, a pay model. And how do people know that it's there? I, it has been added to some of the, tracking, you know, regional tracking maps and whatnot. So there's an app that tells people where they can charge. Yeah, I think there's a, a couple of different online apps or platforms for that. Where, where is it specific? Where are these charging stations? So currently there's just one and um, it's right here in front of the DPW trailer. It's, it's constantly used um, by town staff, um, but people do. Right. Again, and just uh, to be clear, that that was for sorry, RJ. That was for our team. We bought three to four electric vehicles, and we needed a charging station, so we installed <laughs> it. You know, and so out of the goodness of our heart, we're not going to charge ourselves to charge it. And it's being, you know, we allow right now. We're allowing residents and then in the area to use it after hours. It's not a big expense to the town, but obviously, as we go forward and we we finalize our infrastructure, we need to have a process and you know, allocate those that are 100% strictly available to town staff and then those available to the public will have a charging structure. So we're building this, you guys. It, it just takes some time to build it, but we're not using sales tax measure funds um, to pay for the electricity at this point. So, And, and actually as part of a future update, <laughs> sorry, actually sorry. The, the two heads that we're in the process of adding here, one is going to be completely dedicated town and then actually most of the cost is going to be paid by grants. So a lot almost all of that 30 grand will be credited back unless we go and add additional EVs elsewhere in town. And, 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 and I know, Todd, we're ranging off of a sales tax question 
like really far afield. But when you say at some point, those um, stations will be, won't be comped. Are we talking about six months, year? Yeah, it'll, it'll probably be a year from now. I would okay. say it could be sooner. Right. Uh, yeah, and because the question is, you you set that up. You know, there's a lot of procedural things of then how do we use that for town staff Monday through Friday? You know, we're not charging ourselves, so we got to figure it out. And then, you know, are we just gonna, you know, how do you restrict that charging station from the public at night if you're not using it? You know, we could park a car in front of it and leave it there. You know, there's things we can do, but right now, you know, it's assisting the neighborhood, and a few people are using it. And, you know, we're, we're okay with it, with the, with the cost benefit right now. But yeah, probably in the next 12 months, because we want to start to really add some infrastructure to some of our parking lots. There, there would be some hardware. additional hardware, right, that some key in certain codes or swipe your credit card or whatever. So we don't currently have that on the, the one charger we have. I guess the other question, Todd, is I guess you haven't had any issues with trying to um, charge one of the city cars or vehicles and there's a Tesla parked there and you have to wait two hours for that to charge, right? Because it sounds like it's mostly on the weekends or after hours during the weekdays. So it sounds like it's not an issue for us to get our vehicles charged. Yeah, we figured it out early on. There was a couple of things that we had to work through, but I know staff was able to, we put up some signage. And so people have been respecting our signage. So yeah, yeah we're, we're okay. Hey, yep. each, each full charge is close to 300 miles. So it's not, these vehicles don't need to get charged every day. Um, so we can find our slots, you know, you know, multiple times a week and, and get what we need. Okay. Yeah. And I don't see like people from other towns coming to our town to get free charging and lining up around the block. <laughs> They're not advertising. <laughs> we don't yeah, want those think, large Koreans so. over here. Yeah, I think the hardest part is, is uh, probably. I think the hard, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. Um, I'm probably looking at four hours or so for a full charge. So it's not as if you go have lunch and you come back and you're you're on your way. It's you'd have to spend a lot of time in town to get a full charge. Yeah. The harder part is going to be for those residents that are using. It if we do go to charging them. And all of a sudden they go through the culture shock of charging, you know, getting charged for a charge. Okay. All righty. Okay. I, I, I have a couple of questions. One is on Hunt Plaza, there's 90,000 there. Do you know what that's for? It looks that's, like. Yeah, that's mainly for the rent here on, on Hunt Plaza. The rent with respect to to the building to um to the building that town staff is is currently in it's fifteen thousand dollars a month um and we aren't here for the full year so it was ninety thousand dollars for at two two four camel vista the name of the building is is hunt plaza and, and how did we come to that that's a sales tax legitimate expense so we attach this to the infrastructure project of the town hall project. So the temporary move, we put all of our costs into this project. So everything's related to it. So we took that to council and the recommendation for the totality of this project being partly the temporary move and moving over to Hunt Plaza would be paid for by the sales tax fund. Okay. And then are we, I know it's probably a loaded question. Are we on target, do you think, to make, meet budget for sales tax revenue? Because I noticed last time it jumped up like 600000 And is that from car dealers or Amazon or just everything in general? Or is it just hard to pinpoint? Well, based on the conversation, the latest conversations with um, the sales tax people, HDL, it looks like we, we probably will exceed the $3.5, $3.6 million <laughs> that's in the budget. We have... Um, we've received two point, nearly two point five million dollars. You know, and that's half of the payments we expect. So it seems likely that we'll probably exceed the three point five, three point six million dollars. I saw somewhere in here that there was, I think, a projection from the previous year to this year, or maybe it was earlier, that there was a projection of a two point something percent increase. Did I make that up? Two point two. Um, well, last year, um, I think it. I think it might be a little more than two point two. That might have been at the time. 
But yeah, last year we got, we received 3.4 for the entire year and we had budgeted 2.8. And this year, um, you know, as I said, we've already received nearly 2.5. So it seems likely that we will exceed the budget. Mario, what, what is HDL's projection? Wasn't it 3.6 to 3.8? I think it was 3.8. I, I think yeah. it's 3.8. Yeah. We're, Are we talking about percent or millions? Millions. Yeah, okay. millions. Yeah. Yeah, because I had uh, when I said two something, I was talking about a percentage of year over year. We're trending positively. Yes. It's trending back yes. to you know our original. So it's order. trending positive and it's more positive than we, we had projected or anticipated. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I got another one for you. Sorry, I'm on a roll. Um, on senior programs, it shows that there's a budget of 100,000, but nothing's been spent. On um, senior prog, look at the senior programs. Um, let's see. Well, we usually do that at the end of the year in the current. Yeah. Well, well so far, I think I, I'm just looking. If I, I'll just find the page quickly. I think we've spent some on senior. Oh, well, maybe. Uh, let's see here. Oh, right above it, um, where if you're looking at page 23, senior programs right above it, where it says regular salaries, that um, that 5.6 or excuse me, $5,600, that is for senior programs. Um, those are the salaries that I've transferred over um, to senior programs um, so far this year. And I think that was through December. So probably be twice that when we're finished. Is that transferred to Park and Rec? Um, from Park and Rec, yes. From okay, so it goes to Park and Rec? No, it, it goes, it, it goes, well, yeah, I guess if you're saying does the credit go to Park and Rec, it does. The credit okay. goes to Park and Rec because um, the senior programs are being paid here instead of from Park and Rec, yes. Okay. And, and just an FYI, because we're not there yet, but Patty does have her hand raised. <laughs> We'll be ready. We'll be ready, Patty. <laughs> I had a question and now I'm looking at it and I don't know if it was for the previous year or this year that we spent 27,188.22, 27, on the climate adaptation plan. That had that must have been in last year, right? That it was I believe that was last year and it was Yes, carry I, it, the original budget. I think might have even been the year before, and it was carried over. Yes, I don't think we have any um, anything in this year's budget for climate adaptation that we have paid so far. No, no, we don't. I'm looking at the line item. No, not this year. Yeah, that seems to. That was one of those things. It was like, I'm not getting all of these things really are sales tax appropriate. I know everybody has their pet project that they think kind of rolls into sales tax. It's okay. And so I want more specific. That, yeah, so that was when we got a grant on, right? That was, we partnered with Caltrans. We got a multi hundred thousand dollar, I think $300,000 grant. But the climate adaptation assessment and work is one of the key things to infrastructure. So that was one of the things, you know, normally you'll do a master planning process you identify okay. all your capital improvement projects and you go attack it. Well, this is the, you got to think of this as the same way. This is our 50 year look ahead, looking okay. at you know, all of the areas and then really developing projects behind it. So I, I would, I would argue that it's absolutely important um, in part okay. of the infrastructure conversation. And, and what we got for 27 K and change was planning. That was consultant. Yeah, it was it was planning. It was part. I mean, I say exactly. You know, the whole. I know the whole climate adaptation side of it. Majority of it was covered by a grant, but there is. It's more than twenty seven thousand was covered to offset okay. that. That was community workshops. That was our process. You know, our two year process. Okay. Todd, I guess more of a global question is anything that's on here as a line item, you can justify or Daria can justify that it should be coming out of the sales tax fund. Correct. No, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Daria, um, on page 23 uh, in these undesignated uh, subsubject here, um, debt service principal, I'm assuming that's kind of just hasn't happened yet, but why is our debt service interest so 
large versus budget? Um, the interest, I, you know, I, I was looking at that. I think uh, I might have had the wrong amount in for the principal and interest. I got that, you know, when the the bonds were were issued, when the um, oh yeah, the certificate of participation were issued. So I think those have to be adjusted within those line items. Okay. Well. Yes. It just. That seems odd. Um, anyway, okay, yep. Yeah, I think I think the majority, as you say, as you point out, thank you. The um, the majority this year should be an in interest, not in principle. I think that was an estimate at the time. You know how it, that the total um, payment was going to be, you know, four hundred and fifty one thousand, and the estimated amount for principal and interest might have been not correct. So, so the principal and interest is is bundled into that three ninety two number. Is that what I think so? Saying? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. That makes more sense. Okay. Jean, do you have any questions on that? Yeah, I guess I'm having a hard time reading this. So uh, let me ask a really stupid question, which you may have answered. What is the difference between period activity and fiscal activity? Okay, the um, on this report, the the this period ends February 28th. So the period activity is just for the month of February. Okay. And fiscal activity is for everything since July 1st of this fiscal year, you know, through February 28th. So one is monthly and one is year to date. Okay. Yes. Fiscal year to date. Yes. Is that accurate? Yes. So, so you generate these reports monthly? Yes, I can. I can. Yes, I can generate them at any time. Yes. Yes. This is just the way it's set up. It's called period and, and fiscal. Yes. Okay. Already. So what? So you just said something. Uh, some I think Todd said something about this being, you know, you're projecting out for thirty years. Uh, I guess my only question is, uh, when when will we see, um, you know, the capital improvement projects going forward at least five years, um, and the priorities that's been. I'm I'm pretty sure the priorities have changed. I think uh, you know our town hall is probably taking up most of the um, oxygen in the room at this point, and so um, I, I'm just wondering when, in the process, I, I'm presuming it's right before uh, the end of the budget, uh, end of the year or something, that you're going to give us uh, what our projected um, capital improvements are for five or ten years going yeah, forward. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question, Gene. So a whole bunch of, so there's a lot of questions in there. So the first one is you're already seeing some projects that are, you know, the, the climate adaptation assessment is a living document. It'll constantly be updated as following science, right? So one of the parts of that right away, you're already seeing some undergrounding at the base of Christmas Tree Hill of some power poles. And you're also seeing a major project, a multi-million dollar project on Paradise Drive um, going through um, you know, the public process right now of workshops. So you're already seeing projects and those will be updated. Well, again, we do a five-year look ahead, three to five-year look ahead in our capital improvement projects. We do that every year through the budgeting process. So you'll see that in the coming months and we'll talk about it. Um, really going back to measure F and this sales tax measure, we're kind of coming to the end of that five-year, you know, we have a couple more years, but coming to that five-year period. And so a couple of things that we wanted to also talk with you. You know, one of the last major projects um, um, on that list is really the Casa Buena project. And so we have monies earmarked for that, uh, tied to some grants. And we're also leveraging, you know, the Transportation Authority of Marin on that Casa Buena project as well um, from the home key, you know, political um, <laughs> kind of side conversation when that got put in place. So there's a lot of moving part parts to that. And so we will bring that to you. One of my thoughts was to, as we get, you know, it's been a few years now since Measure F, um, I've asked Mike Moriarty, our communications manager, to join our next meeting and to talk it out with this group, because I would like to do, they do an annual report and Tam does a really nice, thoughtful report, but I, I think we should spend some money and kind of give a five-year review of the sales tax measure and, and how how we've spent money, where we've been successful, really share, tell that story, and then also have a piece in there from the sales tax oversight committee, 
how we're doing and what are some things that we want to look you know for moving forward so i think that would be a really good message and story to tell the community um, and it also help us as we go through the process to really look back what do we do well what could we do better and then what do we want to do moving forward the other big project is the town hall project's a major project and it's it's a foundational project for us whether it's sexy and everyone loves it or not it's necessary it's part of our infrastructure we've had a lot of multi years of conversation about it, but it's not at the expense of any other convert any other projects and I can say that because you can look at right now in the budget. Um, we've set aside um, over $3 million from our general fund to really offset some sales tax monies we don't want to use the sales tax monies if we don't have to we're using the general fund monies from our previous surpluses uh, first. Um, and, and that's necessary and helpful because then it's not at the expense of any other projects that we promise the voters so. Um, we're able to uh, time our projects within the time frame we promised, and, and we're going to be able to do that. RJ's got a big plate in front of him, but um, you won't be hearing from us. We don't have the staff or the money not to deliver a project that we promised the voters. Casa Buena would actually be happening a little bit sooner if it wasn't for PG&E. pg and is in the process of doing a major gas line undergrounding project, and it's one that they didn't share with us. You know, what's something RJ, since he's been here, has done a really good job making sure our roads don't get torn up to say, hey, what's your five, all the utilities, what's your five year look ahead? What are you guys gonna do? And let's mirror our projects. And this is one that they didn't share. And so we've been, RJ and his team have been really aggressive to, to get a better schedule and, and push them to do this sooner than later so it can mirror our work. So as soon as they're ready to go, we're coming right behind them. Um, and so there's a lot of, and again, that's a, that's a $3 million project. The Paradise Drive project could be a $3 million project. Um, that's, if I get add to that one thought on, on Casa Buena, yeah, so we're, you know, we were ready to go this summer. Um, they've got a large gas transmission, really provides gas all the way down to Mill Valley, Sausalito. So a huge project. It's a safety project. Um, so the good news is when we ask them about schedule and say, hey, how do we know this isn't going to slip? And they say they have compliance, which to me is a, a safety word to ensure that these facilities are in safe condition by um, you know, their, their target, their scheduled dates of, of 2023 for one project and 2024 for the next. So we'll be right behind them with the sidewalk and paving. And then this summer, we're taking advantage of doing the, the sewer work. So we're doing as much as we can. Um, you know, obviously not, um, can't control everything with respect to pg &E, but everything we can on our end. Does that kind of answer your question, Gene? Kind of. So we're going to see this in the coming months as some as some more of the uh, long term projection work or reporting or whatever. That I think Todd. So it's for a later meeting. In, in our yes, Gene. In the coming months, we will before we go to the budget process with the council. We'll we'll have a meeting with you to talk about that and also the report that I think. I'd like to send out to the community and RJ. If you have any preliminary things too, it'd be helpful. You know, we could forward it to the team too, so they can look at it in advance and kind of. Have yeah, um, definitely. I would. You have something. I believe um, if you want a, a good look at this current calendar year, we have the staff report from the strategic workshop, which I think really outlined those. And then beyond that, um, you know, things are listed, and we have some sense of priority. But I think there's a little bit more. Um, there's a little flexibility built in just kind of based on um, everything that happens, you know, we find out about, you know, certain streets are getting paved or um, an emergency project pops up. And so we have to be a little bit fluid, um, but mm -hmm. they live on a list and, and we do constantly review the list and, and try to calibrate it and um, optimize it to the best um, based on everything we know at that time. Okay. Todd, I think your comments here for communication is important. I, my neighbor across the way, the engineering department is just landing on him about a small retaining wall requiring uh, certain things be put in that are roughly doubling the cost of this wall from $10,000 to $20,000. Um, he's not happy, but his comment was, you know, they want all these fees to pay for this town hall remodel. And I just didn't want to get into it too much, but there, there is still some... I think lack of understanding of how this thing's being funded and with uh, these fees going on and stuff, people don't understand it. So it's just, I appreciate it's going to be good. 
No, I think there's a combination of don't understand and don't want to understand and want to blame, you know, that they're disingenuous. <laughs> well, it's uh, in any event, it's yeah. it, it, going up ten thousand dollars for ten thousand dollar wallies. I don't know. There's a story behind it, but in any event. Okay. All righty. Is there anything else that we need to do with regard to agenda item 3B before we uh, go to the public? Nope. No, it was just a discussion item. Thank you. All right. Let's open it up for any public comment, question. Thank you. Um, first, Daria, thank you so much for breaking out the uh, youth and the senior. It's very helpful to do that. Fred, thank you for asking what happened to the uh, budgeted amount for seniors, so I won't have to go into that. RJ, uh, are you saying that it may go into an additional year before you can do the Casa Buena project, or are they doing it this year and you guys are doing it next year? Yeah, so the, we're doing our um, Santa is doing the sewer project this summer. Um, PG&E will be doing some preliminary potholing and other work on Casa Buena and Meadowsweet this summer. They're they have two large projects, one they're calling a strength test and one that's a, a new um, gas transmission. And those are two separate years, summer or 2023 and 2024. Um, so we are, um, and, and this is, info that we're, we're trying to gather and put on a web page and, and obviously share with um, those in the area. But um, we want to expand the outreach, but that's what we've heard over the last six months. So that would mean complete streets in 25? Yes. Oh, dear. Uh, and then the last question is on the disaster preparedness line item. Is that salaries? I think it was 35 or something. Um, on, uh, let's see, disaster preparedness services. Um, for this current, are you asking about this this year? Yes, this current one. Um, may, no, there have been no, no salaries. Oh, maybe it was the old one when I put my hand up. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Let me look at the, old, at the old one. I think I'll look at the amount. There was a minimal amount of um, salaries put there. Um, because this was for 2021 and I at the very beginning of the, the that fiscal year the town employed um I can't remember what exactly her title was a, a resilience coordinator I think it was to work with the fire department and so she she was paid twenty six hundred dollars um before she um, was no longer employed with the town but that's the only portion just that twenty six hundred dollars out of the four hundred and forty six thousand dollars that um, that was for salaries um, in the in the previous year, and I don't think anything yet for this year has been charged to disaster preparedness. And, and that was Marla. That was Marla. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. For mm -hmm. Overseeing the chipper yes. program. Yes. Right. Thank you. All right. Hey, I'm sorry, RJ, one quick question uh, based on what Patty just said. Are you gonna be able to, um, and maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, for Casa Buena and Meadow Suite, would you be able to send out sep maybe separate mailings to those neighborhoods to let them know this is what's going on? Because I know the website is great, but sometimes people always don't always go on the website or read the chronicles. Um, sure. Um... Well, we're pushing PG&E, right, though, for that? Yeah. Right? Uh, because it's their message. I mean, we don't want to send something out and be wrong, right? Yeah. And they have them change something. And so we're pushing them to, and we'll help them with it. We'll do, we'll use all of our social media routes too, but we want them to draft that message, give the schedule so we can start telling that story. Okay. So uh, sewers are also going to be part of um, this, which means that that's going to involve all the properties in terms of their sewer lateral work that they have to do, is that true? Um, so any that are tied to the sewer main and, and it's not, I'd have to look at the map. It, the, the lines don't run just the whole stretch of Casa Buena. They go for half or a portion and they cut up the hill. So 
um, any ones that are tied to that main, um, we would have trigger our privacy ladder ordinance, in which case they would have at least six months after the completion of that project to upgrade their private sewer laterals. So plenty of um, notice and plenty of time to, um, to um, do the work um, after the project. Well, I, I don't think six months, you know, given the, the state of trying to get people to work on this stuff, uh, I don't know if six months is adequate to do that kind of work for, for homeowners. Yeah, we, um, you know, our, our typical mailer is, you know, at least 180 days. And if people have a hardship or something, we, we work with them individually. Okay. And when do you anticipate that going out? So that's the other thing. When I say six months is when our job's done, they would have 180 days, but we're going to advance our project. We're going to tell them about the project and tell them that at the completion of the project, they will have to um, comply with the ordinance. So in all reality, they'll probably get nine or 10 months. And so that's- Are we talking of, next year? Next year or this year? We are, we are building the project this summer. This so summer. at the completion of this summer's project, they will get a final letter that says, you now have 180 days to upgrade your private sewer lateral. But in advance of the project, we're gonna say, hey, by the way, this project is starting, it's coming up. And at the completion of this project, we'll send you a follow-up letter and you will then have 180 days from that date. Okay. All right. Agenda. So is there anything else that we need to cover then with regard to item 3B? We've discussed it. It's for information only. We've included the public. Yes, we can move on to the next item. So the next item on our agenda is approval of the minutes from the June 7th, 2021 meeting. Does anybody have any corrections with regard to that? Or can I get a motion to accept the minutes as written? I move to uh, accept the minutes as written. Second. Call for vote. Committee member Spurzum. Aye. Yes. Committee member Greenbaum. Yes. Chair Gerbosi. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Item four on our agenda is to discuss a next meeting date and then to adjourn. Um, at this point, I don't know that there's anything to discuss on a next meeting date. Um, I'll work with um, Todd and Daria, and once I get direction from them, I'll do another doodle poll and get everyone's input on availability for another meeting. Okay. All righty. Then this meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.